Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes from me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Every time that we hold out our hands to receive the Eucharist, the person distributing the bread says, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. This simple phrase is a direct reference to our gospel lesson today. For the last couple of weeks, we've been working our way through chapter 6 of John's gospel. Two weeks ago, we heard about Jesus feeding the 5,000 with bread and fish, Last week, we heard the people mistakenly claim that Moses gave Israelites bread from heaven when they were wandering in the wilderness, and Jesus corrected them that it was not Moses, but God who had given the bread. Then Jesus identified himself as the bread of life, a phrase repeated in our passage today. This morning, we hear the people react to Jesus' claim that he is the bread of life or the bread of heaven. They understandably can't grasp that this man whom they know, whose parents they know, could be anything other than an ordinary man. We hear various stories like this throughout the Gospels, and I always feel some sympathy for the crowds. After all, think of someone who you grew up with whose family you knew. Even if this person grew up to be wildly successful or famous, there's a part of you that will always see them as just a normal person. You remember them as the kid who sat in front of you in math, or who played with you on a sports team, or hung out with you in youth group. And this is how the crowds react to Jesus. I imagine them asking, how can Jesus claim to be the bread that came down from heaven? We know his parents. And we've watched him grow up from a little boy. Jesus doesn't exactly clear things up as he responds to their reaction. He begins talking about how the only people who can come to him are drawn to him by the Father, and that he will raise up those people on the last day. I imagine the crowds listening in bewilderment and thinking, calling himself the bread of heaven was bad enough, but now he's talking about raising people from the dead? Two millennia 
of history and tradition have softened Jesus' words for us. We've become familiar with them, which on the one hand is wonderful, as we take them into our hearts and they become a part of how we understand and live out our faith. On the other hand, though, because we are so familiar with them, they often lose their shock value. It's an interesting and often powerful experience to pick a passage from Jesus, like the one that we have today, and take a moment to try to mentally step back from all that you know and believe about him, and imagine yourself as a person in the crowd, listening to him speak for the first time. You realize just how radical much of what Jesus said really was. You realize the charisma that he must have had and the passion that he must have exuded. But you also realize why so many people, including his own disciples, were often confused by his teachings. In John's Gospel especially, Jesus often uses flowery and poetic language to describe himself, his relationship with God, and his relationship with his followers. So given that, what exactly does it mean that Jesus calls himself the bread of life? Jesus' I am statements are beautiful images that point towards deep, mysterious truths, truths that can never fully be understood. But even though we'll never fully grasp their meaning, spending time with these images is an incredibly valuable experience. Bread was a staple food in the ancient world. It was part of almost every meal, and it features prominently in the Bible. Almost any time that there are passages that include people eating, there will be some mention of bread. As a staple food source, bread was literally a source of life. In our passage, Jesus contrasts the image of himself as bread with the bread or manna that the Israelites received as they wandered in the wilderness. As they wandered, they became extremely hungry and cried out that it would have been better for them to die as slaves in Egypt. The people say to Moses, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord says to Moses, I am going to rain from heaven bread I'm going to rain down bread from heaven for you and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day This bread from heaven is what became known as manna and Jesus reminds the crowds your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died the bread that God sent to the Israelites during their time in the wilderness was a true, life-sustaining gift from God, but the people still lived and died as the natural course of life. Jesus now contrasts himself as the bread of life with the manna in the wilderness. He says, this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is, of course, a direct reference to his crucifixion and the practice of Holy Eucharist that developed immediately after, as his followers gathered to obey Jesus' instructions to do this in remembrance of me. I imagine that those first few times of celebrating the Eucharist were fraught with intense discussion and profound awakenings as the disciples began to slowly put together the pieces of Jesus' teaching throughout his ministry, with his actions at the Last Supper, with his mandate to repeat these actions in remembrance of him. We have multiple accounts of Jesus eating with his disciples after the resurrection, showing that this practice of table fellowship, of eating together, 
continue to be an important time of communion between the risen Lord and his followers. The practice of gathering together at the table with Jesus is what we do every time we celebrate the Eucharist. The disciples wrestled with the contrast of the physical reality that people's bodies die with the promised resurrection and eternal life that they were now witnessing firsthand in the resurrected Jesus. Their faithfulness to this wrestling, to the continued practice of the Eucharist, even as they struggled to wrap their minds around its meaning, is why we are here today. It is why we gather every week, multiple times per week, to share the bread of life together. It's why we are reminded every time that we receive the bread in Eucharist that this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. We believe that Christ is truly present in the bread and wine of Eucharist. These are not easy images for us to wrap our minds around, especially in an age when we expect quick and rational answers to our questions. You can't Google the bread of heaven and expect to find it. You'll find lots of people talking about these verses and pointing in the direction of the image, but you have to be willing to embrace mystery in order to experience it. And experiencing it is the only way to slowly begin to plumb the depths of what Jesus meant when he said, I am the bread of life. So come to this table, receive the body of Christ, receive the bread of heaven.